Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, I'm back. Today we're gonna do the review on my new Mugen MBX7R Eco. Let's do the unboxing and we'll get on with the review. Hey, hey everybody, Jason here. I'm camped out over at the Proline test track and I'm, today is the day before the Battle of the Sickest over at Thunder Alley. And so I've got three new, I guess four new gadgets technically, technically that I'd like to show you guys. First is this dialed pit board from Lee Martin Racing. This thing is super, it's actually super light. It, it looks thick, but it's really, really light. It's made out of this stuff called Fiberlam, which is a super expensive uh, exotic composite material that they use for airplane flooring. I got this from my buddy Lee Marson. And if you wanna, if you wanna get one of these things, I think they're like 25 euros or maybe 40 bucks. You can get these things over at uh, LeeMartinRacing.com. But it's a very cool pit board. They, they'll do some custom graphics. I think you gotta pay a little bit extra for that. To be honest with you, Lee Marson hooked me up with this one. So thank you, Lee, I appreciate that. But I just thought I'd share it with you because it's really cool. It will fit in an Ogeo bag and it's the right size for both 10 scale and eight scale buggies. So that's the first thing. The second thing is my buddy Ty and Gord over there, 110% racing. They just released this new ride height gauge. And the way this thing works, it's got this little dowel in it and it's got these three little, these little triangles that bolt onto the edges. And I don't know if in the sunlight, if you guys will be able to see, but there's different heights on there. So basically you can set up so one ends eight scale and one ends 10 scale or whatever you really want. It goes all the way down to like 16, 16, 16? Goes all, the, goes all the way down. This thing goes all the way down to 16 millimeters for like four wheel 10 scale buggy and stuff like that. So it works pretty good. And while there are a lot of other gauges out there, I happen to love my Gia gauge. And I've, you guys may have seen my goofy little 3D printed cubes. The downside to most of the gauges on the market is if you have to reach your hand under the buggy, especially on a four wheel drive 10 scale, sooner or later you're gonna bump it and then you're gonna have to redo the whole thing. So this is nice because you kind of set it down and slide it under there. So those are the first two. And then here is the last set of gadgets. These are my new eight scale buggies that I decided to buy from Mugen. I've ran a lot of different buggies and for the last couple years I've been running the Kyosho stuff and I've actually liked it. Well, I've liked the way it handled, but I've broken it a few more times than I wish I would have. And I'll be honest, some of the times I broke the buggies, I probably should have, but there were definitely a few times when I broke it when it probably shouldn't have broken. And I thought it was time to try some new stuff. So I got my Mugen stuff and uh, I guess we'll crack it open and get building at least the e-buggy so I can race it tomorrow. Let's go. All right, this is kind of like a double unboxing. I don't think I've ever seen one of these on YouTube before. So we'll be the first to do this. No bat knife today. Just gotta use the good old fashioned exacto. I even got my girly purple exacto out. Oh man, let's look, it matches the Mugen stuff. That's pretty funny. Let's see what we got in here. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm talking about. Let's see what you guys can see and can't see. So here is the. Uh, E buggy, right? So we'll set that down right there. And then here is the nitro buggy. So we'll set that down right here. And I know you guys are probably wondering, did I buy any aftermarket parts? And I did. I bought two steering servo pieces and that's it. That's all I bought. So I'm gonna run the kits right out of the box, give them a try. And if the setup doesn't work exactly the way I want, I'll go ahead and change it. So let's see, is this thing sealed or what? Make sure you guys can see what's going on over here. It's a little windy out. Have to probably shoot this whole unboxing video and have to re-record all of it because of the wind. All right, so here we go. All right, so that's what you get when you buy a Mugen MBX 7R Eco. Looks like it's got a body. Looks like it's, it's, it's pre-cut, which is dialed, I'm gonna tell you right now, because I hate cutting out bodies. I have a can of white Tamiya paint to make this thing look dialed, but it's the nitro body, which I actually think is a good thing. You know, that way you can run the bodies back and forth or kind of cycle them through. Looks like it's got a Mugen wing. And then this is like a gargantuan bag of parts. Looks like it's all labeled and stuff pretty nice. Diffs, looks like this is the receiver tray. Side rails, looks like it comes with some tools. Here, looks like, uh, Sway bars, springs. Looks like it comes with some, some oil and stuff like that. It's like 550 CST. Of course, here's the chassis, right? And then last but not least, it looks like there's a supplement in the manual. Let's see here what it says. Please use these attached updated screws to replace the following. So it looks like in a couple of the diagrams, there you have some updated screws for you. And then here's the manual. So, all right, so that's it. So when you get, that's what you get when you buy a Mugen MBX 7R Eco. 
We'll, uh, we'll do the nitro unboxing another day when I'm actually going to run the nitro car. So right now I, I got to get building this thing so, well, so I can drive it and race it tomorrow. So, all right. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Okay, so you guys got to see me unbox the video over at the ProLine test track where I actually built the buggy on Thursday, the day before the race down at Thunder Alley, the Battle of the Sickest here. And I was super lucky because Adam Drake was actually in attendance at the ProLine test track. So Adam offered some build tips, helped me out with a few sections in the buggy and stuff. So Adam, thank you so very much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all the help. I, uh, I, it was a really good time building the kit and overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So let me, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me take you through my personal buggy like I do. Let me take you through my personal buggy like we do in most of my other videos and then I'll get on with the very specific sections of the build and performance and whatnot. So this is my actual kit right now. I'm running an associated XP 1015 servo. And while this servo is not ballistically fast or super duper strong, it does have about 200 ounces of torque. And so it seems to get the job done. I've got a Tekken 1900 kV motor, a Tekken RX-8 Gen 2, and the battery's not in it right now, but I normally run a Reedy 4700 milliamp 4S battery, and that's just about that. The only things that I have changed on the buggy from what come in the box, I put this aluminum servo piece. Let's see if I can turn around so you can see. I put this aluminum servo piece on there for the steering system, and I put some Kyosho orange rear springs in the back, and I'm going to be honest with you. These Kyosho orange springs are probably way, way, way too light for most applications, but I was playing with the buggy. I shortened the wheelbase. I was trying to get the car out of the corner a little bit more consistently and just more, a little bit more hooked up. And these were the only springs I had, so I put them on. So, so that's what's on my buggy. Let's get on with the review. Okay, so before we get started with the build, let me just tell you why I chose Mugen. What I really wanted was a high-end product Basically, the Kyosho and the Mugen are really the two main buggies that are Japanese based. I wanted something that was really easy to drive, really high quality, and was cost effective to campaign when you're traveling all over and racing quite a bit. And I found that the Mugen for me turned out to be that buggy. It's the, the price is right, it's super high quality, it's got a great build. And another little tidbit, Mugen doesn't actually make ready to run kits. Mugen Seiki is a race only company and I really like that. So that's why I chose the Mugen kits. So that's it, let's get on with the build. Okay, so the Mugen build actually went really, really well. I've seen people on RC Tech and on other sites mention that the manual wasn't that good and stuff like that, but I found the build to be extremely smooth, really no issues whatsoever. A lot of little, a lot of attention to detail. Like in the rear body mount, they use a little rubber grommet so that the rear body mount actually flexes and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Inside this rear body mount, there's actually a grommet and it actually flexes, see what I mean? And like it's little, it's attention to detail like that that really makes me respect the guys that drew this buggy up and designed this buggy. So at the end of the day, the build went smooth. The quality was great. Just, just very, very happy with the build. A couple of tips. I like to fill my diffs all the way up to the top. I do not fill my diffs just to the cross pins. I fill them all the way up to the top. So what I'll actually do is I'll actually take a thin drill bit and I'll drill all the way through the diff case. That way, when I smash everything together and the overflow oil comes out, I can put the screws in and it'll push the oil all the way out the other side of the diff case. And that's just something that I learned from building my Hot Bodies D413 10 scale buggy. I just feel like if you fill the diff cases all the way to the top, you're getting the same amount of fluid in them every single time and you don't have to worry about whether they're overfilled or underfilled or anything like that. It's really just a consistency thing. So other than that, the build went, sm build went smooth. The motor mount was a little tighter than maybe I would have preferred. Like when I put the motor mount in, it was really snug sliding it in but that was really the only gripe. So that's that. Oh, yeah, one more little tip here. When you're putting these things in, these little, these little aluminum pieces that actually hold in the, uh, the pivot ball, they give you an Allen wrench, but it's kind of a pain in the butt because it doesn't actually control the, you know, the, you, can, you can just slide in and out. If you build one of these, you'll know what I'm saying. You may want to consider looking into a specific driver that has a really shallow tip. That way you can kind of control the attitude. Adam had like this fancy huddy tool or something like that. So I need to get one of those pretty soon. But other than that, the build was very smooth. The buggy is just, I don't know. I hate to use such a cheesy word, but it just felt elegant. Like it's just very simple, very clean build, no filing, no clipping part, extra plastic pieces away. Just good build overall. Very, very happy with the build. All right, let's get on to performance. Okay, so the first part of the performance review really would be like jumping and landing. And I thought the, the buggy jumped very, very well. It was very easy to control the attitude of the buggy in the air. 
Landing was good, but I wouldn't say great. Not that it can't be great, but it comes with these eight hole by 1.3 pistons. And a lot of these setups that you'll see online are using a six hole by 1.3. And so at the end of the day, I think that it probably, it probably like statically, it felt, felt pretty good on the bench, but I think that it just didn't really pack up maybe as much as it should. So I would say good, not great on the landing, but of course that can be changed with oil and springs. One more thing I wanted to mention about the way the car lands. It definitely lands very forgiving with that front pivot ball suspension. Quite a few times I came down on the front corner or the car came down at an angle. And I wouldn't say that the car just land, landed and stuck on some of these really big jumps, but it, when it landed, it came down and it was very forgiving in, in not rolling over. It kind of came down and was able to just transfer weight and kind of slide down onto the surface. And so I did like that about the way the car landed for sure. Okay, so cornering. I thought the buggy, the kit setup comes with 7,000, 7,000, 3,000 using Mugen oils and all the diffs. And I thought it was actually pretty easy to drive. It was a little pushy off power. And sometimes it was a little bit loose on power, depending on the track surface. When the track was really damp, I thought the car was pretty good. It was easy to drive, but not as fast as I wanted. When the track was really dry, it was a little bit harder to hang on to, especially getting out of some of the corners. I ended up changing my diff oils to 5.52 with using low sea oils and liked it quite a bit better. Just the car turned in harder off power. It was a little bit more tame getting off the corner, though I don't think it got out of the corner as fast. So overall, one thing I really, really liked is that the car did the same thing in every corner every time. It really was a very consistent performing car. You know, sometimes you have those cars you turn in and in the exact same corner, the car does something different in every lap. I didn't experience any of that. The car was the same in every corner and that I really, really liked. So overall, I would say cornering, very, very good. Acceleration. You know, I think that this kit actually comes with a spring that might be just a little bit too heavy in the back uh, in general. It, it's hard to say. I ended up going to a softer spring and I thinned up the diff oils and stuff. When I had the original diff oils in it, the car, as soon as you get the car kind of lined up and pointed, you yanked on the throttle, it was, it was gone. Because I thinned up that specifically that center diff down to 5,000, and I'm sure that I'm pretty sure that 5,000 low C is actually lighter than 5,000 Mugen. I definitely felt like the car wasn't getting off the corner maybe as fast as it should. But on the flip side, I wanted the car to be really easy to drive. So there are some other things I'd like to try down down the line. I'd like to try some of the underdrive rear gears and stuff like that, so that I can run a thicker center diff and still have a little bit more. Uh, forward bite or like I don't want the car waggling when it gets out of the corner and it doesn't seem to do that right now But I'm convinced that if I put the underdrive gear in the back and maybe a thicker center diff that I might be able to get off the corner and Have the car be a little bit more planted. So that's something I want to do. So I would say acceleration very good uh, Is it absolutely ballistic? Uh, no, but you know, I it was better with the stock diff oils But when I thinned it up, it was a little bit easier to drive. So for me, it's very good, but it, it definitely could be great value you know value is like super important to me these days the every time i either buy a kit or build a kit value is it, it's on my mind more and more and value isn't just the metal and plastic it's just not it's not just the parts in the box it's the whole global experience of owning a car it's it's other guys that are driving the car because they like it it's local parts support, it's setup support, it's all the stuff. It's, it's are the manufacturers continually developing new geometry? Are they trying new things? Are they updating bits and pieces on the car? And I would say that for the Mugen, this definitely seems to be the case. I mean, they had the MBX6, the MBX7, now the 7R, and they're making the car better and better. And so I really think that the Mugen is either the best or one of the best values on the market. There are a lot of good buggies out there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking on any of them. Associate is working on a new buggy. Kyosho, obviously, they, their stuff has always worked really well. The S-Works, Agama. I mean, I could go on and on about all the different eight-scale buggies that are in the market. But at the end of the day, I felt like here in Southern California, happening to have, you know, hap I'm lucky, you know, Adam Drake, the, you know, the, the main Mugen factory driver here in America is only two hours from me. So anytime I want to go racing or if I know he's going to be at like a JBRL, it just makes it that much better for me. There's just that much more support for me when it comes to setup help and all that kind of stuff. So overall, I think that you get an amazing amount of value in the box and metal and plastic, but the whole global experience of just owning the car, having a car that's very easy to drive, I think is just... I think it's second to none, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it, right? So that's just my opinion. Okay, do I have any gripes about the car? Sure, none of these cars are perfect, right? 
This car is no exception. Uh, one thing that you don't really see because I have these Kyosho springs on here are that the Mucan springs tend to really rub the threads on the shock body a lot more than I think they should. I don't know if the springs are just like a smaller diameter. I know that originally Mugen used 15 millimeter shocks and these are 16 millimeter shocks. I don't know if the springs have been updated. I just, that's just information I don't have just yet. If I do come up with some of that information, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video, you know, as an update. So the springs definitely rub the shocks a little bit more than I thought they should have. That was one thing that I was kind of like, eh, it was kind of schmedium. The other thing that I've noticed, there's, there's two, there's two issues with the front end. One, the pivot ball is kind of a double-edged sword. It like it handles really well, it's really smooth, but it definitely feels like even when you have the, the suspension raised up where the steering has the least amount of resistance, like, like this, it definitely feels like there might be just a little bit more friction in the whole steering system because of the pivot balls. So that's one. And then you really can only control, there's a washer right here that allows you to change your camber. And there's one on the bottom that technically allows you to change the track width a little bit, but you really can't control the length of the front of this top arm like you can in a traditional C-hub style buggy. So the downside of that is that I feel like there's a little bit less tunability there, but the upside is if you're not an absolute pro at setup, it's a little bit harder to dial yourself out. So you take that however you want. Um, it's just a double-edged sword. So those are my gripes. My gripes are the springs rub on the shocks, not a deal breaker, but it doesn't make me happy. You can't change the length of this arm and it feels like there's a little bit more friction inside the pivot ball setup. So, and that's it. Those are my gripes. So those are my three gripes and none of them for me happen to be deal breakers. Okay, so overall, what do I think? I really like the kit. I mean, I built the kit on a Thursday, took it racing on Friday, I TQ'd the event that I was at, and then I won the event on Sunday. I mean, how can you argue with that? A brand new kit, I've never even driven a Mugen for. I built this sucker on Thursday, raced it on Friday, dialed it in on Saturday, and then won the mains on Sunday. So I'm super, super happy with this. And I, and I just wanna say thank you to everybody that helped me out. Adam Drake, thanks a ton for helping me build and giving me advice. Even when I was at the race, Adam's like, listen, if you get in trouble and you have questions, text me. And I did, and he helped me out. I wanna thank Ty and Gord Tessman because even as I would make setup changes, they would kind of help me evaluate what was going on and they would offer advice. And, I, and like Gord was the one that said, hey, look, before you go to a heavier spring, go out in the shock tower and it, it'll probably make the car a little bit stiffer, but a little bit more, a little bit more consistent. And Gord, you were dead, you were dead nuts right. Thank you so much. Uh, Travis and Mescua helped me mess around, helped me, you, Travis convinced me to take a little bit of droop out of it and, and that actually made the car a little bit better. So at the end of the day, there were a lot of people that helped me out and I just wanna say thank you to all you guys. Say thanks to Levi Jackson. Levi builds some of the absolute sickest layouts that I've ever raced on, and uh, and I just that's it. So so that's the event. Good times. Here's a little bit of footage of the car running, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. You're in an A-Mini that guaranteed at least 36 minutes of the run time today. Or it's 4 the other You are in that 30 minutes of the one that I'm And we will get 45 minutes per class. And the next one in the park will get 60 minutes per class. All said and done. Not to mention a 7, 10, and 15 minute qualifier over the last couple of two and a half days. Hopefully you're gonna have a good time, but you will not be out there for you guys next race to support in that Revolution Raceway for the July weekend. Once again, that'll be we'll make sure that Caroline gets to that. Before it gets dark, so you guys can get to your presentation and watch the fireworks. We'll start the rest of the way we'll be done fairly early five or six o'clock. So we'll be able to drive an hour or two, you can still get to where you can be. Hey, by the way, before you leave, I just want to say thanks again for watching my videos. I only make these videos so that we can have fun together. By the way, you'd be doing me a big favor if you could either comment, like, or even better, subscribe to my channel. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. I guess maybe if he raised his roll center really high and then did all that.
He's just using the camera to get you to work on his car. That's, That's not true. <laughs> Well, Alright, looks good. I guess I'll get cracking on this baby. Thank you. Yep. I really don't know exactly what we're talking about, but we'll figure talking it out. Talking about a MBX7 R Eco. Boom! I'm cool with this. We got sound. I need to stand back so I actually get all the way in there. No, you're good. You can stand. I look like a giant. You are, you are. You know that's how it looks from my angle every day. Hey everybody, Jason here. I've got. <laughs> I'm Adam. <laughs> I know, I know.